Yeah. Or someone would ask me the other day, she's like, what are you, they're like, what are you going to do when you actually find someone really similar to you? Would you get along? I was like, gosh, no, no way. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. So today we're here with Jason from Purple Turtle Co. So Jason, can you please tell us a bit more about Purple Turtle Co? Um, yeah, yeah. So I don't know where you want me to start. Do you want me to tell you kind of how it, how it all began or? Yeah. yeah. Where, yeah where, did the, where did the Purple Turtle Co swim out of? <laughs> okay. Um, well, it's, it's a bit of a, a boring long story, so I'll keep it short. But um, so basically, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the, the condition pancreatitis. Yeah, I've heard of heard it. Of that. Yeah, it's, it's a, a thing a lot of old people get from like years and years of drinking. Um, mm -hmm. But basically, obviously, I had a good time at uni and um, I ended up getting it. And um, I was in hospital for a little bit in New Zealand. And then whilst I was kind of on, in hospital, I was, you, go, you go through all those thoughts and you're like, oh, what, what would be those things that I'd love to do um, or I'd regret if I... I went tomorrow kind of thing mm -hmm. and um, for me it's always been start a company so um, when I was in hospital I was I was in for a couple of weeks and um, I the first day I got out of bed I went to to have a shower and when I went in the shower room um, there was just plastic bottles everywhere they give you like a shampoo a conditioner a body wash and um, I, I don't know maybe it was all the drugs I was on in the hospital but I remember looking around and having like this vivid memory and just thinking man this is so wasteful like what is going on here um so had my shower got back into bed and just got on the laptop and started started setting it up so started a social media page um facebook instagram started building the website and um the goal was to basically create a company that can focus on creating kind of a zero waste solution to towards plastic and sustainability issues so that kind of all happened about a year ago and then um, kind of over the last six months since lockdown, I've not been working. I've just put all my all my time really into this, and um, it's going really well. We've got a team of around forty people working with us now. So, did you say fourteen or forty? Forty, four zero. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. All from you know this crazy idea when you were probably a little bit high on pain medication, <laughs> and it's just kind of grown from there. That's the one, yeah. So a bit of a weird one, but um, like I've, I've never been a sustainable person. Like I'd be a liar if I said I did. I was that guy that would go to the supermarket and put like bananas in a plastic bag and then oranges in a plastic bag. And back then I just did, I wasn't educated about the problem and uh, I was just naive to it all like most people are. And then, yeah, from, from being in hospital, I had a lot of time on my hands. I'd read a lot of articles, watched a lot of documentaries, educated myself and then thought, hey, this is a this is a really cool problem that I'd love to solve being someone mm. who's studied innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, yeah, it was, it was something I thought, right, well, if I'm going to start a company, I might as well do something good. So yeah. That's mm. kind of how it started. So when you were in hospital, like when you first got the idea, how long did it take till you actually started working on it? Was it just like that same day you were like, all right, this is what I'm doing. Or were you like umming and ahhing a bit? Um, I had I had this idea in my head. I like I said, it's all I love problem solving. So when I when I see waste, whether it be plastic or packaging or just anything, I I always think like, well, that's not efficient. Like that's costing people money. That's costing the environment. Like it's just a waste. It's, it's a, a mm. resource that we can we can use again. So for me, the whole the whole idea of being able to create solutions that solve sustainability issues but also save companies money and keep that user experience like if, if we can create new products that that solve those three areas then that that kind of excites me um so yeah it, it started off really just as like an educational basis so i was doing like the facebook page the instagram page um it was all about creating content just trying to raise awareness educate people um on the impact of plastic and it, yeah, it started off at that. And then as I was working my full-time corporate job, I didn't have too much time to kind of really push it. Um, but basically in March, I, I lived in New Zealand for three years. Um, and in March, I come back to the UK for a, a two-week holiday. 
and obviously COVID hit, so they closed the borders in New Zealand. So for the last six, seven months now, I've been stuck in the UK. So I haven't been working, like my whole life is in New Zealand kind of thing. So I've just had a lot of time to, to throw at this really. And UK would be a strange place to be stuck at the moment. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's not doing too well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, it's doing a little bit better than you guys anyway. Yeah, you guys are a little bit better than us, sorry. Yeah. Just a little bit. We're almost there. I'm in Victoria. So I'm in the, the one that's fallen behind everything else and dragging everyone else, to, everyone else down, but we're, we're getting there. Oh, well, but I I've, guess having a podcast is, keeps you busy. And then yeah, exactly. Busy. There's always, there's always something to do. Yeah. Um, in, in terms of, uh, you know, I think lots of people have a lot more spare time on their hands and a lot of people are finding they can, you know, research and learn about all these new things. Is there anything in particular you would you would recommend someone to start on to start looking into the impacts of uh, n- not living sustainably? Um, I think like where would be a good place for someone to start in terms of like educating themselves? Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say a few things really. Like the first thing is is just follow a couple of accounts, whether it's on Facebook or Instagram or or whether it's like a, a news company that focuses on sustainability. Um, the first thing I'll do is to say, educate yourself. Cause it's quite, it's quite surprising that like, when you start looking at the facts um, about how big the problem is and how, how it Im- impacts people, wildlife, and just the wider environment. So it's like one of those, um, we, we, we're going through a time in the world where there's a lot of kind of like issues that are starting to get fixed socially and environmentally. Like we've got obviously the Black Lives Matter movement, which is picking up pace and um like the whole deforestation movement these are kind of problems that you can't always physically see around you but it does still exist behind the scenes so um i think it's really important to just educate yourself first like learn the facts um get your information from lots of different sources um because again with the whole fake news thing in, in our lifetime anyway it's like the credibility of what people are seeing, they, they question it all the time. And it's like, if you can really find the true facts, then you'll realize that there's a problem that needs solving. So yeah, yeah. let's start with educating yourself. That's a really good yeah. point. Like I've really been looking at working to critically analyze things better. And it's so important to be aware that, you know, with fake news and information overload, we're just getting hit with all this information that just comes out of nowhere. And like some is not validated. So like what sort of things are you doing in that to make sure like you're actually getting the right information? Um, it's just get, getting your info from different sources. So I don't know if you guys, have you guys seen that new documentary that's out on Netflix, The um, Social Dilemma? Yeah, yeah was, I was, I watched that. We were just yeah. talking about it before. Yeah, um, yeah. What did you think of it? Oh, it was, it was, it was very confronting. I guess yeah. it, it, it points out that there's a massive problem and everyone knows there's a problem, but no one does anything about it. And I think that was the main takeaway for me. But I, another big thing, I, I, you know, and something that really drew me in was the fact that fake news can, be, can grow six times faster and it can be much more popular than, than real news. And I was just like, I was like, you know, there's, there's, there's so much out there and there's, 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 there's no process to filter it all, or you just get everything. And it's like, well, mm. take your, well, you don't even get to take your pick is what I learned today. Someone else picks exactly. for you. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's the problem I see with the way we live at the moment with technology is that from, from that documentary, if you, if you haven't watched it, viewers watch it, I guess, but um, you, you, you're kind of told what, what you're going to see, like the algorithms are predetermined. So like from your, the start of your, social media experience the first thing you click on the algorithms learn so they know what you like so they show you more of the stuff they like that you like you're not going to see all the stuff that you don't agree with or the algorithm doesn't think you agree with so if you are someone who doesn't care about sustainability and you've shown that through the content you're reading online the algorithm's not going to show you anything to do with sustainability so you actually actively have to go out there and educate yourself and look for it it's not going to be put in front of you Mm. um so yeah that's why i just think especially in this time of our generation it, it's so important that you you question things and you go and do your own research um 
we we live in quite tight so social circles as well now. So like, if you don't come out of your social circle in the real world as well and go and have conversations with people who have a different viewpoint to you, um, you're just going to always be tunnel visioned into your way of thinking. You're not going to develop yourself and learn new ways of how other people see things. So I think education is a big part of, of getting where we want to get to with, with sustainability anyway. And yeah, the, the, another thing the social dilemma highlighted for me was, you know, there's, there's lots of problems and it doesn't matter if we know that it's a problem, we choose not to do anything. Like we're, we're kind of happy living in this, you know, blissful ignorance, like, Oh yeah, someone else will solve that. And mm -hmm. you know, the, you know, it's the, it's people like you who take the onus on themselves, be like, you know what? No, we can, we can change it. That's a problem. People actually need to become aware of and start actively making choices throughout the day. Cause I mean, yeah, yeah. Like just a few people that, 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 you know, are highly educated. That's, that's a very, very minute percentage yeah. of the population, you know, take a few principles that the whole populace can apply. Man, you can have such a huge change, but it's just kind of getting people to become aware through education. Mm. And, and, and that's the thing, like when you think about, um, it, it, once you've learned and you're aware of the fact that you're being unsustainable, you're contributing to that throwaway lifestyle. When you're conscious of that, you can now change your behaviors. So at the end of the day, we all vote with our, with our dollars, with our money. So if you go to the supermarket and you've got the options to buy some carrots, which are wrapped in a plastic bag or some free kind of carrots to just grab as you want. If, if you buy that plastic bag of carrots, the company are going to order more bags of plastic carrots. Mm. That's the way it works. So mm. it's just so important to make sure that you, you, you spend the right way and encourage mm. businesses to, to, to sell the right product. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough, like, because at the, at the end of the day as well, it's a lot, a large proportion of the world live on the bread line. And the sad thing about it is, is that if you're living on the bread line, you, you don't have that luxury to spend more to be sustainable. Because there is this stigma with, if you want to be more sustainable, you have to either pay more or you have to compromise the quality of the product or the user experience. So um, I guess what we're trying to do at Purple Turtle is, try and build products which fix all three key issues. So it saves companies money through having less packaging. It improves the environment from that packaging they're not in entering the system, but then it also improves the user experience and the quality for the person buying it. And if you can achieve all three of those things, you're now going to have a product that should be adopted in society. I don't know if that makes sense. No, that's, yeah, that's, no, that's that spot on the trifecta. Yeah. Yeah. So what sort of products are you guys producing at Purple Turtle? Um, so to kind of put it into context, we, we only really started like six months ago in the scale of things. So if we go back six months ago, it was just me. Um, over the lockdown period, we've, we've grown the team now to, like I said, about 40 people. Um, wow, so in only six been months, in 40 people. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, there are people everywhere, like people in Australia, Canada, New Zealand, England, F India, Africa, we've got people all over the place. Um, but yeah, we, we've only really just launched what we call our product design team and our research team um, over the last kind of month or so. So um, we've got a team of around 17 engineers, um, product designers, researchers who are putting together a couple of products at the moment um, to solve single use issues. So what we're trying to focus on right now is the bathroom space. So I'm sure if you go into your guys' bathrooms, like how many, mm. how many shampoo, conditioner, soap, deodorant, like I'm just as bad. You go into mine, my mum has packed it out in there. There's nothing I can do. But, um, we're trying to look at ways how we can change the way we use the bathroom. Um, try and keep the experience as, as um, intuitive as possible, but how can we redesign products to help us not need packaging anymore? So what we envision is, is a world where when you have a shower now, there is no plastic bottles in there. There's a device that you can use that will allow you to have that same experience without the need of bottles. Um, we're looking at how we can reinvent the way we brush our teeth, no longer need 
plastic um, toothpaste bottles and and that's they're the kind of things we're working on the, on at the moment. More consumer based products. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you're really looking at like fast moving goods, how you can mm-hmm. make them as sustainable as possible. Yeah, yeah. So like a lot of companies, you would have seen seen it recently. Um, a lot of companies love to greenwash. Our, our products are 100% recyclable plastics now, and and it's like yeah, that's great, but you're assuming that the user is going to recycle it, and you're assuming the local council will then go and recycle it. Um, like there's enough stats out there to suggest that the recycling system is, is not the answer to solving the issues. Like it fails, I think 70, around 70% of all recycled um, plastics end up being mismanaged. So companies need to go a little bit further than just saying, oh, this is recyclable, but actually going back and redesigning their product so that they get as close to zero waste as possible. And then the recycling system picks up what, what can't be reduced. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those things I think where companies just need to engage more in the zero waste philosophy rather than just, uh, so, oh, you can recycle. Yeah, 100% yeah. recyclable. And like with, um, as you said, in six months time, it's 40 people now. And I can imagine yeah. like for Sam and I, it's just us too. But like the, the more people we add for different sort of things, it's like get, things get a bit more complicated. So mm-hmm. hey, what challenges and opportunities have you found from like growing so quick and essentially having to share your idea and dream with now 40 or 39 other people? Yeah, um, that's a good question. So kind of in terms of COVID, um, as much as it's been a horrible thing, it's, it helped grow this project to where it is quite quickly because um, obviously, like you said, there's so many people these days that have so much free time on their hands that, that want to build something or contribute to something good that makes, makes you feel good, gives you a purpose. So obviously with COVID happening, we've got, I think like three and four people coming out of university with no chance of getting a job in the first kind of year. Um, And we've got people coming out of industry who are being made redundant, who have got 20, 30 years experience. Um, So that helped us out because we had this huge pool of people who wanted to get their teeth into a project. They wanted to keep busy and they were aligned with the values of what we're doing. So that was really great. That's kind of what allowed us to scale quite quickly. Um, in terms of like managing a team of 40 people, it's, um, it's one of those things I think just comes with experience. So when I was in New Zealand, I was, I was um, working for a big retail company and the, the, the store that I was running, I had a team of around 60, 70 people um, that I was leading. So the leadership side of things, the organizational side of things, I guess just comes with experience. But um, that to say, it's still difficult running this all remotely as well. <laughs> Not, not the easiest thing. You have to have a few people in there who manage small teams and stuff. Yeah. So you you mentioned, uh, I guess, what I took as quite a good tip before. Yeah, uh, I guess it was to use your use your buying power as like a vote for for the environment. Mm. Uh, I think I think that's a great tip because we you know you can you can use that as a pretty simple rule. You know, when you're at the the supermarket or the store, I guess it depends where you live, you'll call it something different, but you can literally choose on the spot to make a little difference. Are there any other main tips that you would give, you know, for example, to me and Leroy to be able to become and start actually living a, a more of a sustainable life? Um, yeah, yeah, I guess like the, the other things as well is we, it, it's, that, it's that classic kind of um, concept of, if 5% of people are sustainable and the other 95% aren't engaging, then we're not really making any change. So we need to, we need to create an environment where we're able to influence our peers and people in our close circle as well. So um, at this time in like the kind of sustainability movement, I'd say it's not so much about you personally just reducing the, the amount of single use you use, but the most value you can get is by influencing others and creating that social conformity. So um, it sounds a bit like a pyramid scheme, like you influence mm. a few people, they'll influence a few people, but I think that's what needs to happen first. We need that 
we need that kind of social conformity to kick in, people to put pressure on their peers, their family, educate each other in a, in a constructive way. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't say, like, all right, go out now and buy everything that you have in your house as bamboo or, or something like that. But, um, <laughs> yeah, just, just try, and, try and influence people in a positive way, educate them in a positive way. And then once we've got enough people in the world engaged with it, then companies will kind of recognize it. And companies are driven by profit. So if demand changes, they'll change. It's the way of um, survival for a company. So, yeah, I'd say, I'd say that's probably my, one of my key points. Yeah. Mm. And I guess like building it you know, bit by bit, let's say it's 5%, you know, even if we can shift that over to 10%, you know, in a couple of years, you know, at least that's a change. You know, if we can keep that growth rate up, eventually we'll start rolling to somewhere a bit more, hopefully sustainable. But Definitely, yeah. I guess it, it does raise a question. And I guess it, because I'm looking forward to watching David Attenborough's new series that, is, that has just come out. Oh, man. And I, I guess, that. like, my, Unreal. My, 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 my housemate said, get get ready for it like it's pretty it's pretty big like it's it's gonna like once you once you watch it you can't unwatch it yeah, and yeah. like uh, it just do you think that we have the capacity to to change before it's too late um i i, I would be i'd be lying if i said i knew the answer to that i'm i'm <laughs> i'm not a <laughs> I'm not as a, as an expert as David, so David or um, any anyone else who studies maybe like sustainability or environmental science. Um, I'm a I'm a business guy, but um, from from what I've seen anyway, I think any improvement will help. It, it, if we throw in the towel and just say oh, it's too late, then um, mm, then it is too late. I, I personally, I don't think it's too late at all. Um, the the world's the world's a strange place. Like it, it recovers it recovers from quite a few things, but I think, yeah, if, if we can make enough change now, maybe over the next 10 to 15 years, we'll be in a space where we can reverse some of the damage we've done. But again, yeah, I can, <laughs> I can give you a definite answer on that one. <laughs> yeah. To add on to that, like, I think as the new generations keep on coming and coming, we can see that this is a bigger, a bigger focus for us. So with that being too, like there is actually a really good chance that we could change things up, but um, yeah, it's just going to really take, it's, it's going to take some time and some effort on all, on all parties. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, not, I, I think with the I, youth coming through, Oh, sorry, go, go for it. Oh, so just, I guess more based on, on the way the social dilemma put it was um, it wasn't a question as, as if, you know, you know, is it a yes or is it a no? It's like, we have to, we mm. we don't have a choice but to try you know we don't have a choice but to say yes you know there's there's no real scenario which we can we can get away with saying no it's not going to change like we we're it's the environment's forced our hand now we don't have any more get out of jail free cards mm. i think yeah with with um with what you were saying as well Leroy, the young the younger generations coming through like um I, i've noticed it anyway just in like the real world just watching how how young young kids these days engage with with sustainability um i think it's in a completely different space to when i was growing up as, as a kid anyway um we used to be like those typical kids walking through the street like you see people littering all the time and it's like we've come a long way since then i think kids these days um are a lot more educated and aware of their environmental impact so give that 10 years, like more and more of these people with different mindsets are going to come through and it, it will create a new culture. Um, but it's, it's that million dollar question, like you said, is it too late or what, what's going to be irreversible? Yeah, I guess we'll probably find out in our lifetime, I reckon. Mm. Yeah, I, ho I hope not, but <laughs> <laughs> there's enough people out there. By then, change and Purple Turtle Co. would be, would be producing exactly. the greatest sustainability items. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be the dream. And have what, your, what? your little logo slapped at the bottom of all the, <laughs> of all the, of all the boxes. <laughs> what is your like, long-term 
plan because yeah you sound like you're very like you know you know what you're doing and you know where you want to go so where do you see this in the long term um i'd say so right now we're more more focused so we have like a three a three kind of philosophy stage philosophy so the first thing is educate society so we do that all through the content the website the articles the social media um like phase two is what we call providing the tools so actually creating products that can help people be more sustainable or help companies reduce their um, single use numbers in their supply chains and, and operations. The third stage for us is kind of more the long term goal is, is to be recognized as a brand which can certify companies for their sustainable practices. So similar to what you've got with like fair trade in terms of paying farmers the correct amount for, for their crops. Um, the same way like FSC deals with deforestation and they'll stamp their logo to say that the, the packaging has been sourced ethically. Um, I would love Purple Turtle to get to the point where the, the logo can endorse companies and, and society can feel comfortable and confident that that company is meeting certain sustainability criteria. Um, and obviously the, the team we're building here, we've got such a good team already um, Purple Turtle with designers and engineers. We want to we wanna use these people that we've got to hopefully then go over and work with companies on different projects, um, audit their operations and their, and their supply chain, identify opportunities on, on if they can maybe redesign a process or implement a new product that can, can cut out waste. Um, so that's, that's kind of the long-term goal is work more B2B um, and help companies be more sustainable. And again, trying to achieve those three key areas of reducing their costs, improving their customers' experience, um, and, and then also reducing waste. So that's kind of where we want to go long-term. But it's, um, right now, we're more focused on the education and, and, and consumer products. Mm, I really well, love we, holistic. Yeah, I agree. We love a plan where... <laughs> We're, 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 we love a man with a plan too. And especially with the, with the will to be able to actually execute it. <laughs> so in, in terms of, I guess, growing from a boy to a man, you know, to become the man with the plan, is there anything that, that you would recommend for, for young adults who are looking to try and be able to do a similar thing? You know, of course, take their own journey, but start to be actually be able to learn these skills to be able to well, manage lots of people and be able to actually start running something that's, that can grow quite quickly. How, how do you do it? How do you learn how to pick up these skills? I love that transition, by the way, that was a good transition. Yeah. It was so, so <laughs> smooth. Yeah, that was smooth. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, that's a great question. I think it goes down to kind of like your, your guys focus on, on self-development. Um, like, we're on this planet for such a small, small amount of time. As much as that you think you're here for a long time, it, it goes so fast. Like I still think I'm 18, but I'm 27 in two days time. So like, you've got to find things in the world that, that you're passionate about and that you want to put your time into, whether it's developing a company or like progressing yourself in sport or reading books and, and making yourself more intelligent. Like we all have to have a purpose in this, in this world. And, I think finding that purpose and finding that passion is the most important thing before anything else. Um, and for me, like I've, I've always been so passionate about business, but I never knew how to apply it to something that I, I love doing. Um, I always loved football. So for me, it was always like, I want to be a football manager. I want to do something football based, but I, I could never get into that. So for me now, finding something like sustainability, which is, something I, I can really get excited about and passionate about, it, it then opens up new doors for, for new opportunities. Like if you're in an environment where you're enjoying yourself, you're happy, if you're working with a the passion, then you're going to develop yourself regardless of, of the situation. So that's, that's the thing I would say is like, just make sure you're in an environment where you're going to grow and learn. Like I said at the start of the call, like with social circles, don't hate people who have, different views or opinions to you listen to them understand their point of view 
and then take something away from the conversation. Even if you don't agree with it, just take something away and then you're developing your, your understanding, your, your knowledge of the world. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of what I'd say to that one. It, it sounds like you've managed to you know, lock down a, a pretty good why that you can wake up and say, you know, this, this is my why, this is what drives me every morning. And to me, it, it sounds like you want to be able to use business to improve our sustainability. And I think mm-hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty cool thing to do. And I think everyone can do a little bit of soul searching and find something that, that gives them that get up and go. And like, I want to, this is what I'm doing yeah. today. I'm going to make sure I get it done. And do, do you have any tips, let's say for, for, for me and Leroy, to be able to help mm-hmm. find that thing that gives us that zing, that gives us that, that get up and go juice in the morning? Um, I don't know. I guess what you're doing here is one of them. Um, like the question I always ask is like, not can you get out of bed in the morning at a stupid time to, to do what you, what you need to do, but would you be happy to do that for two years straight? And mm. if the answer is no, then it's probably not something you, you're truly passionate about. It's probably a passing thing. So, yeah, I don't know. It's different, for, it's different for every single person, man. Like, it depends what your hobbies are, what your values are, what excites you in, in this life. Like, the key to, to life is just being happy. So you've got to do something that makes you happy. It um, doesn't matter if you, if you don't make a million dollars out of it. It doesn't matter if um, you're not changing other people's lives like there there doesn't need to be that aspect to it it's just make sure you're you're happy and you're not negatively impacting people around you so Mm -hmm. if you can find something that that ticks those boxes then i think you'll you'll have a very successful life yeah well said i've i've definitely seen in myself through the different roles i've had when i'm doing something more passion and purpose driven and oriented towards me I can, yeah, I can do it for forever. It doesn't even feel like work. It's just, it's more like a hobby. Like, and it it is so important that, but um, yeah. And and at the same time for people listening out there, yeah, it's quite hard to find your purpose. Like it falls upon you. Like, for example, as you said, you were just in the the hospital and you came across like the, the wastage in the bath, in the shower and you got like sort of connected dots for you. So it it comes in different little moments. That, then that mm. for me was that last little step of taking the next step, which was researching, educating yourself and becoming a little bit more, I guess, involved in the learning process of what can be done. I think that's like, you can have that, that, that moment, that light bulb, and then taking that next step to figure out like what it really is. And then you, I think from there, you'll know if you have the, if you have the capacity to dive into whatever it is a bit deeper, then I think you, I think you'll know. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like we said. Just go looking for things. Don't let it always come to you. Mm. It's, um, yeah, it, you've got to, you've got to go and search for things. And like I said, if you go and search for things, you you develop yourself as a person as well. You learn new things. You meet people who you may never have been in an environment to meet. Um, and that's how you develop yourself as a person. You just expose yourself to to many different ways of life. You understand different people's point of view where they've come from their struggles and yeah you just develop a more of an appreciation for the world i guess um get very philosophical but (laughs) Um, (laughs) you gotta you get yourself out meet new people and that's the way you're gonna really learn to grow we we learn best from one another i reckon Hmm. yeah yeah I, i watched you guys um yeah i think a podcast not long ago on uh, how you meet, I think it's one of your shower thoughts. Oh, um, how, how do we meet new people? How do you meet new people? Yeah. And like, it's a, it's a tough question because like, look at the world we're living in right now. Um, mm-hmm. You can't go clubbing no more. You can't go to bars and pubs and socialize as much as you used to. And for many people, especially young people, that's like 75% of your life. Like mm. at that age, socializing mm. is everything. Um, so how do we fill that gap now? And it's, it's tough. Like you have to go and find new people um, and, and socialize in a different way. And yeah, it's not easy. I can, I can tell you that. <laughs> no, not at all. So how do our listeners get in contact with you or find you or just, yeah, know more about Purple Turtle? What are your. Yeah. Links? yeah. Um, I mean, just, just follow us on Facebook or Instagram, I guess like all our content 
goes through those two platforms. Um, we've got an amazing team of content writers. There's around 20 of them that contribute um, sustainability articles each, each week. So we, we publish around three articles a week. So um, yeah, just keep an eye on the website, follow us on social. Um, hopefully we can educate you a little bit. Um, and then also, again, like we're, we're a company run completely by volunteers. Like no one, no one is getting any money out of what we do. We don't make no profit. Um, so we're just at the stage where we're trying to build a company with like-minded people who have the same values as us, um, want to contribute their time to something good. So if you've got a skill, whether it's like web development, content writing, if you like marketing, product design, researching, whatever your skill is, um, like we, we can use it and we can put you in an environment where hopefully you'll learn something new and, and meet new people as well. So, um, yeah. If you wanna if you wanna get involved and work with us, hit us up. We can we can have a chat. If if you just wanna educate yourself and keep an eye on what we're doing, follow us on social. Awesome. Oh, yeah. it's been a pleasure having you on here, man. Like it's it's always really good to like as you said, talk to new people and even from our conversation today, I got a definitely a few key takeaways. I'm gonna have a look at my bathroom, see what I what I can change around there for yeah, starters. <laughs> Well, yeah, no, I'm, glad, well, um, I'm glad you got a few things out of it but it was yeah it's amazing to meet you guys as well keep doing what you're doing it's um it's important to have these conversations and stuff so it's great that you guys have that platform there well we're we're looking forward to catching up with you again sometime in the in the future hopefully a little bit you know a bit more covid free but we'll see how we're going you might be back in new zealand next time hopefully yeah it's been across the border <laughs> wouldn't it <laughs> yeah no all you good could... mate all good it's been a pleasure talking to you guys. Thanks very much. See you, Jason. No All the best. Take care. Cheers.